Hello everyone, long time no see. Uh, I've been busy working on a new project and I'll talk about it uh, at the end. But now I want to show you the newly released SD 3.5 large. So for me today is Sunday, October the 20th. SD 3.5 will be out the 22nd and I think they have also plans for a new version of medium and a turbo model too. The difference between large and medium is the number of parameters. Uh, the first is 8, the second only 2. I've been testing the weights since a few days now, but uh, bear in mind that uh, the version that uh, you are going to download might be slightly different from what I'm showing uh, to you today. So let's cut to the chase. Is SD 3.5 large any good? Yeah, it is, but not for the reasons uh, you would like. It's not remotely comparable to Flux, but that's not the point. Let's start from what it can do. Uh, I think its main strengths are um, overall aesthetics, styles and variations. There's also prompt adhesion and comprehension, but that's a bit more complicated and we'll see why in a moment. Here I'm loading the text encoders and the main checkpoint. The model itself is about 16 gigabyte at FP16 and 8 GB at FP8. For the negative, I'm using the SD3 negative conditioning that cuts the negative embeds at only 10% of the generation because SD3 doesn't like negatives anyway. For model sampling, stability wants you to use 3.0 but I believe for photorealistic images 2 or 2.5 is better. Looking at the sampler, I'd say you need at least 28 steps for realistic stuff. Uh, the suggested sampler is DPM++ 2M, but you can try with uh, any converging sampler like Euler, DACE, DDIM, IP, NDM, etc. For the schedulers, only SGM Uniform, Simple, DDIM Uniform and Beta uh, are actually working. SGM Uniform is the recommended one, but uh, depending on the prompt you may have more luck with uh, DDIM Uniform. There's no right or wrong here, it's very random so you have to experiment. CFG depends again on the subject and the prompt, but your window is between 3 and 6. The result, as you can see, is very nice, the composition is good, the skin very detailed, and also the fact that she's not the super hot top model helps. Um, I mean, she is very pretty, but she has that girl next door kind of beauty uh, that makes the image so much more interesting. Let's try a different ethnicity, maybe Indian. And of course, she has a bindi on the forehead, but yeah, very nice. Let's try Chinese. Uh, this is interesting because I haven't said the age of the woman, so this time I get a slightly older person. Uh, it hallucinated a little on the neck and the eyes are not perfect, but I'm sure that can be fixed with a few additional steps. Okay, next, styles. I have this workflow that tries to generate impasto technique with oil colors. As you can see, it adds a very strong texture, but the face is still very smooth. That means that the model is once again overfit for realistic portraits. I'm trying to lower the shift and that should add some noise, but nope, the face is still too smooth. Uh, let's try a few seeds, now, this is very nice and also the texture on the face is a bit better. Okay, now I'm gonna try with abstract watercolor painting. As you can see a lot of variation from seed to seed. Uh, let's try with charcoal and I need to remove the reference to the colors here. 
Okay, the image is very beautiful, but not really charcoal. Let's try another few seats. Yeah, this is better. Okay, one more test with cute chibi anime illustration. And of course, it's very good at anime, and that's how we know that Lycon is involved in the training. Okay, I'm getting back to this oil painting here. Remember we said that the model is overtrained on faces. Well, here I added two nodes to alter the weight of the text encoder blocks. The first one is for clip L and G, the second for T5. I'm changing only the value and the output and leave query and key alone for now. Here I lowered drastically L and G and just a bit T5. The result will be a very weak vector so the model will have more freedom. Yeah, would you look at that? The result is a bit random, of course, the prompt is not followed as well, but playing with the blocks you can reach very interesting results. I made some tests and I kinda got the gist of how they work, but we are still in the realm of randomness and you really need to experiment with them. Oh my, this is really good. Okay, so these two nodes work on the text encoders. What if I want to alter directly the model blocks instead? A while back I made a flux model blocks buster node that lucky for us also works for SD3. So I need to connect the model pipeline, but before connecting it to the sampler, I'm using a display any node to see uh, what blocks we are actually going to change. The text field expects a regex. I'm writing this wildcard uh, that will give me the list of all the blocks. I'm disabling the output and also the text encoder patching. Okay, let's see. So here we notice something interesting. I was expecting more or less the same structure as flux, but instead of double and single blocks, I have joint blocks. It is my understanding that flux has cross attention only in the double blocks. If I read it correctly, SD 3.5 has cross attention on all blocks. The reason why we can have good IP adapter or models like Instant ID on Flux is that only few blocks have cross attention. We might be lucky here because if true, we will be able to get some decent IP adapter for SD 3.5. Anyway, back to the blocks. These first blocks, I would leave them alone. Then we have context and cross blocks. If I had to guess, I would work on the context block. I have nothing to send to the attention, so I would exclude those layers as well. So to target the remaining blocks, I can use these regex. If I run it now, I'll get the list of only the blocks I'm interested in. Okay, first let's see what the default configuration generates. Now I'm connecting the blocks buster and try again. Okay, nothing much changed because I lowered the weight of all blocks just a little. Uh, let's try with something different. So I'm trying to lower the weight at the beginning and increase it at the end. Doing so, I hope to loosen the model overfitting on the face and still maintain a strong style. So I can use this regex instead. This allows me to alter the weight of the first and second block that arguably are more important and then I set the value every 10 blocks. If I generate now we should have lowered the training strength. Yeah, in fact we get this beautiful painting and as you can see now the face is not as detailed as before. Let's try another seat. Yeah, very nice. Same as for the text encoder, uh, patching model blocks uh, is not something I suggest you to do, but it's interesting nonetheless, and when the prompt is simple and you are looking for an artistry result, 
the outcome is quite predictable and interesting. Okay, let's talk about prompt comprehension and embeds bleeding. I prompt a photorealistic man is taking a selfie with an anime woman. Let me show you how this goes and then we'll analyze the prompt. Honestly, this is quite remarkable. Results like these were only possible with attention masking or in painting. Don't get me wrong, I tried quite a few seeds before getting a good one, but still, impressive. Let me show you this other one that is much easier for the model. So the first thing that I do is to prompt the defining factor of the image. In this case, a scene that blends photorealistic and 3D animation elements. Then I describe the photorealistic man, trying to add some details like 20 year old uh, Italian that pushes the model into realism. Then I'm using Elsa from Frozen because it's a very strong and easy conditioning. The line, the scene is in a cafe early in a warm winter morning does three things. First, sets the background. Second, it implies the clothing the man will wear. Uh, this is important because with difficult prompts uh, like this one, we don't want to waste tokens. So with just one concept, we cover multiple bases. And lastly, with warm morning, we also set the lighting. At the end of the prompt, I try to reiterate on the mixed uh, reality, surreal kind of image that I'm trying to create. And the result is impressive. I'll leave the workflow in the comments so you can play with it. Overall, the prompting is solid and also allows to split the image with different styles like this one. The aesthetic is generally good, especially for portraits, uh, but also food photography. And I was able to do very impressive compositions like this one with minimal effort. And yeah, I can do boobs and women in the grass. But the model is far from perfect. Hands, feet, legs, anatomy in general, and especially interaction between objects and hands are pretty bad. In this image I wanted to do a slasher movie poster with the pun stab Elity AI and I couldn't get the girl to hold the freaking knife. The problem is that it fails so badly that it would be very difficult to fix the issues with a second pass in painting or whatever. Okay, this almost worked and I guess I could fix it with a little editing. Well, anyway, uh, some actions like writing a book usually work, but the experience is overall frustrating. Another problem is with the resolution. Uh, the model is really limited to around one megapixel. Anything bigger will fail even in image to image with low denoise. That means that out of the box it can be used for upscaling, but of course you can use tiling. So why wasting time when Flux already works? Well, apart from the non-commercial license, Flux Dev is a distillation of a fine tune. Flux is not a base model. SD 3.5 has a huge potential as base model. And I think with the community effort, it could be better than anything else. Think of SD 1.5 or SDXL. When they first came out, they were pretty bad, but we were able to do amazing things with them. I believe SD 3.5 could be the new SDXL, if properly trained and if we get good IP adapter and control nets. But we need to roll up our sleeves and start training. Personally, I will explore the feasibility of an IP adapter. I hope you'll join me in the effort. I won't hide that the future of open source or at least local uh, AI generation is at risk. We need alternatives 
and we need to push those models that allow actual training. We can't always take the easier, more comfortable road. Otherwise, we'll end up with only cloud services and boring mid-journey aesthetics. Okay, one more thing. Turbo. I think Stability will also release a Turbo large model, if not the 22nd, a few days later. They sell it as a four-step CFG1 model and they suggest DPM++ to M sampler. As you can see, the result is a bit washed out, but it works and it's blazing fast. I made a few tests and if you set the sampler to DDIM and DDIM uniform scheduler, uh, you can use a higher CFG, add a couple of steps and get usually better results. It's still very fast, but it gives you that additional control that never hurts. And of course, both Turbo and Standard can be used for image to image. In this example, I used Turbo and it works pretty well. So that's it. Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large. It is so good and so bad at the same time, but at least it's a not distilled general purpose base model. Hopefully we will be able to do cool things with it. Okay, at the beginning of this video I said that I was busy with another project. Uh, it's no secret by now that I'm trying to build a UI for Diffusers. Diffusers is an industry standard uh, library, not only for text to image, but also audio, 3D, large language models, training and anything AI related. Comfy UI will always be the tool for tinkering, I'm not trying to compete with that, but I wanted a better interface for diffusers, so I started working on it. I think I should be able to release something in the coming weeks. Okay then, that's all I have for today, see you next time, ciao!